Hey everyone, my name is William Justice and welcome to Who Has a Question, where I do my best to answer your questions about DaVinci Resolve or anything else. This is the first video of my second year on YouTube. Thank you very much, I really, really appreciate it. I sincerely wanted to thank everyone for subscribing, commenting, and giving me your feedback over this past year. If you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping by. If you're looking for something fun, a little bit different, or just want to learn about Resolve, hit the subscribe button below and join the fun. Oh wow, a lot of new faces out there. Tell you what, the first year was great, the second year is gonna be even better. All right, it's question time. Who has a question? Okay, you're up. I'm trying to insert an animation of small dots and dashes into a film clip. The dots going around a doormat on the floor or a sign on the wall. That's a good question. So do you mean kind of like this? Unfortunately, I haven't found a built-in way to create a dashed line in DaVinci Resolve. Um, there's some great tutorials out there. I've seen a lot of stuff. Uh, CB Super has a dash line tool. If you haven't seen that, check it out. But there is a super simple, kind of obvious, maybe you might call it a cheat way to do it that I'm gonna show you to create a dash line, animate it, and wrap it around an object. The great thing is you can use this technique for more than just dash lines. It's really flexible and you can do a lot with it. We have a video clip of a sign here in our timeline. I'm gonna create a dash line going right around the border or edge of that sign. I'm gonna go pretty quick because we have quite a few questions to answer. Let's right click on the clip and choose new fusion clip and then click fusion at the bottom to get into fusion. So there's a super simple way to create a dash line. It happens to be right in front of me on my keyboard. It's called the dash key. So let's see if we can use our dash key to create our line. Let's take a text node and drag it into the node area. Take the output of the text and put it right on the output of the media in one. Let's go to the inspector and use that dash key. Click in the styled text and let's put in some dashes. All right, we got a nice dash line going. Click color and let's set, uh, set the color to blue. All right, so we got a blue dashed line. So how do we get this dashed line to go around the edge of the sign? Well, we just need to change the layout. Let's go to the first frame, click the layout tab right there and change the type from point to path. That, and that lets us create a path and our line is gonna follow the path that we create. We just need to go into the viewer and click where we want our line to go. I'm gonna just follow the outline here on the sign and go back here and we'll close it up. Okay, so we, we have a dash line there. Now you see it's not going all the way around. So to fix that, let's go back to the text area. Obviously, we could add in some more dashes by adding them in the styled text. You can also adjust the size to make the dashes a little bit bigger, and you'll see that they're going a little bit further along. Now the last thing we can do is adjust the tracking. So we can take the tracking and move it, and that's gonna put more space in between each of the dashes. We have a dash line going around the sign. So let's, let's animate it. So to, let's go back to the layout tab, and you see this position on path. So this lets us adjust where our text is or where our dash is along the path. So on the first frame, we're gonna hit a keyframe and go to the last frame of the animation, and we're gonna adjust the position on path. And there we go, we have an animated dash line going around our sign. If you want to go faster or slower, just adjust position on path on that last frame. So what other kind of things can we do here? Let's go back to the text node, and you'll see that the text is right on top of this line. Depending on the da type of dash you're using, because we're using the Open Sans font, um, different fonts are gonna have different dash styles, like that. And you can see that the the vertical position changes. So depending on the style you, cha you choose, you need to adjust the vertical anchor. So you can move it more toward the top and that's gonna put everything above the line or you can take the vertical anchor and move it down and that's gonna put it inside. Let's move this to right, just about on top of the line. It's right on top of our path there. And we have our animated dashed lines. Now I wanna take the dashed line and have it kind of wrap around this open text. So we can go back to our first frame where we set up our path and take each of these points and drag them and move them in, just like that. Now I want it to kind of be a curved path. So let's click this point here and we can click this smooth icon to curve it out. And we really want to do that for all of them. So we're going to click this to select all the points and click the smooth icon. And now we can take these points and move them in a little bit. If you want to create a new point, you just click right on that line and you can drag it. You can use these handles to adjust how the curve goes. 
our line is a little bit too long here, so we need to shrink it. We'll remove some of these dashes, reduce the size, and there we go. So now we have a dash line going around our text. Let's click the text, add a little bit of glow, hit control space and type in glow. There we go, we got a uh, dash line there. Now there's quite a few other things we can do. What if we wanted to have a dotted line? Let's just take, um, remove those dashes and put in some dots. Now the really, the fun thing here is we can actually use some different characters. So let's put in, um, let's get rid of this one and we can put in the, uh, the tilde. We'll have some of those, make it a little bit smaller. You can really use any kind of character you want. Let's uh, try a few more. There are even some symbol fonts you can use to put in all kinds of interesting characters or shapes. In Windows, we can use the character map. I don't know exactly how to do this on Mac, but there's probably something similar. To get this open, you just need to run um, char map and it's gonna pop open. Um, you can pick any font and it'll show you all the characters for the font. So we're gonna pick the uh, the Webdings font. And you can see all these little characters here. Let's click this little lightning bolt on a cloud thing. We'll double click on that. And then you just choose copy. And we're gonna clear out our text. And for the font, you choose your symbol font. In this case, we're using the Webdings. And we'll start pasting our character in. And you see we got that little cloud going around there. Make it a little bit smaller. And let's put some more of them in. Adjust the tracking. There we go. Anyway, this is a quick and interesting way to create an animated line. You can have it curve or wrap around just about anything that you want. I was just wondering, what computer do you use when editing? I have a basic computer setup. I'd really like to upgrade. Um, hopefully I'll get there soon. But for now, here's my editing computer. So if you've seen some of my videos, you know I have two monitors. I use Windows 10. I have 16 gigabytes of memory. The processor is a Core i7-8700 at 3.7 gigahertz. And my graphics card is a GTX 1060 with six megabytes of video RAM. Not super fast, but it gets the job done. Can you make a tutorial for a travel map video which can direct people to a certain location on a map? Okay, we can use our dash line technique with a bit of masking and that'll do for a really basic travel map animation. Okay, let's go on a quick world tour. I have a uh, map in my timeline here. We're gonna right click on that and say new fusion clip. Click fusion to get into fusion. Let's use our dash line to go on a little uh, continental tour. So we're gonna take the uh, text node and drag it into the node area, merge it on top of the media in one and open the inspector. And let's start creating our dash line. Let this one be a little bit bigger. Let's size it up a bit. Let's click the color and make it red. Click OK. We're going to go to the layout and the type. We're going to choose path. And we're going to start from, we'll go to North America, South America, go into Africa, Europe, up into Asia. And all the way down, we'll uh, finish our trip in Australia. So the line doesn't go all the way. So let's, let's add some more dashes in and space them out just a bit with the tracking. So what we want to do is we want to be able to reveal the line as we're moving along. So we're going to use a mask to do that. So let's take the uh, this polygon and drag it right into here. I'm going to open up two viewers and so we can see the poly polygon over here. And we're going to add a background node onto the polygon just so that we can kind of see it there because we're going to mask off this background. We'll set the background color on this one to we'll do like a blue. We want the path of the polygon to match the path that we drew for our text. Um, we can right click here on where it says right click here for shape animation and you can see that we can't connect it and we can't connect it to our map path because there's already a path set up by default on the polygon node. So let's remove that from the polygon node. Let's right click here and you'll see that connect to is available. So we're going to connect the polygon path to the text one path that we set up. And you see the path matches exactly. Now to get this as a mask, we're going to need to make it a little bit thicker. So let's click on our polygon and we're going to bring up our border width. What we're going to be doing is animating this path as a mask on top of this dashed line. So you can see when we go to polygon, we can do the position and we're going to be able to animate that right there. So let's go to the first frame and we're going to take this, this polygon and put it in as a mask right onto that merge node. And we don't need that background anymore, so let's get rid of that. As we adjust the position, it's going to hide the dotted line and we want more of a reveal. So to all we need to do is do invert. And now as we adjust the position, you'll see it's going to reveal our line. Click the polygon, go to the first frame, and we're going to put a keyframe on the position. And we'll go to the very last frame and we'll set the position to one. And now we have the revealing line as we're traveling through the continents. I want to put a little dot on each of our destinations. So we'll space this out a little bit. We'll take a background. Let's make it red. And we're going to put a circular mask on it. This ellipse, and we're going to connect that into the mask input of the background. So there's our ellipse. Let's make it a lot smaller. 
going to take the output of the background and drag it right into this merge. With this merge node, we're going to take this and move it right on top of this position in the path. Right when we get there, we're going to do a little animation. So let's click on the ellipse, go back a couple frames, keyframe the width and height, go forward a few frames, and keyframe the width and height again. Go back to the original one, and let's take the width and height all the way down. So what we have now is when the line gets into South America, it's going to pop up with that little red dot there. Okay, let's make the uh, point for our second destination, which is Africa. We're going to go right to there. That's where we make the turn in Africa. Take the ellipse and background, copy it, paste it, and take it and merge it right back in. That's our second dot. And then we can, with the merge selected, we can take it and move it right into position, just like that. Now you notice that both of them animate at the same time. So we need to adjust the timing of this animation. One, and we're going to use the keyframe editor. You can see ellipse here. Open up the ellipse and we can take both of the width and height. We'll select both of those and we'll just drag them. And we're going to adjust the timing to right when it makes that turn there. Okay, we got it. I'm going to go ahead and set up Europe, Asia, and Australia for our next destinations. Uh, let's see what we got. We got the basic map set up. Looks like I can adjust the positions of these a little bit, but um, that you can just go in and tweak that as you need. So what if we wanted to have the map moving as the path is moving? It's pretty simple to do. Let's go in here. Outside of the second merge, let's add a transform node. And we're going to go to the very first frame and hit a keyframe for our position on the center. And we're just going to follow the map along. And we're going to hit a keyframe everywhere one of those dots is. So right there, we're going to hit a keyframe on center. We're going to follow it to Africa. Hit a keyframe, move it along. The reason we set the keyframes is so that we know when each of these dots is going to start showing up. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in a whole lot and go to the transform, go to the very first frame. We're going to move the map where we can see the start of our line. So we're starting in North America here. So let's uh, start going along. And we're going to go to the first keyframe. Let's move it there. And we know that that's in South America. So all we need to do is move the map and try to put this dot right in the center of the screen. OK, we'll go to our next keyframe. I'm going to take Europe and put that in the middle. You can see these little tick marks show us where the keyframes are. So we're right there. That should be in Asia. So let's take the map and shift it over to where Asia is right in the center. And the final one, we're going to go to Australia right down there. So let's see what we got. So it looks like we could probably adjust the timing and maybe make some adjustments to the line. But that's the basics of you, how you can create a travel map animation. Are you a magician? So am I a magician? Hmm. Possibly so. I have done a little bit of magic in my past. In real life, my grandfather was a magician. True story. He taught me a few of his tricks, and in my younger years, I actually did magic shows for kids' birthday parties. And I wanted to show you a trick right here, but all of my magic gear is in the attic, and it's packed behind like 15 years worth of junk, and I, I tried to get to it. I could not have to unload the entire attic, so maybe next time I'll get something out and show you some of what I could really do. Okay, sorry about that. Hopefully I'll be able to get to it maybe in another video. Thanks for watching and stopping by. If you enjoy my videos, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more fun content about DaVinci Resolve filmmaking or whatever else comes into my head. I really appreciate everyone's feedback and support. Um, leave comments below. I'd really love to hear what you think. I have big plans for year two, so be on the lookout for lots of new videos. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to talk DaVinci, DaVinci Resolve, do some filmmaking, and maybe some other crazy stuff. Um, thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.